There's not much as beautiful in this world as a skybox from the Nintendo 64. I often find myself looking at real skies and going, wow, this is almost as pretty as a skybox. But there's no question that people do have a fascination with skyboxes and particularly a fascination with the skyboxes of Super Mario 64. The skyboxes, the one behind me in particular, are often one of the subjects of all those weird videos about how Super Mario 64 is a liminal space or whatever that means. There's an article about how people are afraid of wet dry world. I'm not here to go down any of those rabbit holes. I'm not afraid of Mario 64. I'm just here to appreciate that beauty, the beauty of the skyboxes in Mario 64. Um, so without further ado, welcome to my new series, Skybox Appreciation. The very first skybox that you're introduced to in Super Mario 64 is the iconic island in the ocean skybox. The first place you see it is immediately in the practice, uh, in sort of the practice area, but uh, you also, upon entering the very first level of the game, Baba Battlefield, you will see it there as well. If you want to get a really good look at this skybox, the best way to do it is to hop in the cannon in Baba Battlefield and shoot yourself up into the sky. And if you do it just right, you can actually find yourself in one of my favorite situations, which is the skybox only situation. And that is when you're flying towards a skybox and you're able to aim the camera in such a way that the only thing you see is the skybox. I love doing that. Before we move on though, I have a pop quiz for you. This skybox appears in five different areas in Super Mario 64. The practice area, bob on Battlefield, Tiny Huge Island, Tall Tall Mountain, and one other level. Do you have any idea what that level is? Post your answers in the comments. On to the next one. The next skybox we'll talk about is the clouds only skybox. This is one that you see in really any level that's meant to be set floating amongst the clouds, like for example, uh, Womp's Fortress. Now you might've noticed that in the footage of Mario 64 here, I've done a little bit of post-processing to give it a little bit more of that CRT fuzz, because I think that really does help glue um, the visuals together with the skyboxes and really make some the beauty of them pop out. So for example, if I turn it off, the way that the, the foreground elements and then the skybox separate, it just, it doesn't look right to me. I don't like it. So we're gonna keep it on. There's something about um, clouds in a skybox. I don't know if it's that, you know, we're used to looking at clouds that are three-dimensional, you know, that, that, that sort of move in front of a, a background sky. And in a skybox, they don't, they're glued to the blue of the sky. So I don't know if it's that, or if there's something about sort of the, the repeating kaleidoscopic uh, pattern that clouds do, but something about um, clouds in a skybox. What is this feeling that I get when I look at a skybox? We'll come back to it later. So now you wanna talk Jolly Roger Bay. This is another one that there's something pretty eerie about it to me, but I'm not exactly sure what. It feels weirdly, like when I look up at it, it makes me feel like Jolly Roger Bay is a tiny world, like a shrunken world in a snow globe. It almost looks to me like, for some reason, like looking up at the Jolly Roger Bay skybox is actually looking down, like it's an inverted skybox. Like that's meant to be the ground and they just flipped it and change the color, even though obviously it's clouds. So this is definitely a personal favorite of mine. The best way you can get a look at it is of course, again, from the cannon, you can get up on top of this uh, little, uh, on top of the little climby thingy, whatever the hell those are, trees, what are those? Some sort of reed or just a, a rock, could be a rock, a stalactite or stalagmite or stalactite, which one? I just wanted to take a quick moment to let you all know that if you really enjoy the content on the channel and you want to help support, head over to our Patreon page. Not only will you be assisting in the creation of these videos, you can actually control what videos I make if you join at the Egg Controller tier, and you'll have access to our regular Patreon check-in series where I answer your listener questions. If you don't feel like doing that, but you have it in your heart to leave a like or hit the subscribe button, that would be great. I'm trying to do a lot of work to not be losing subscribers anymore so if you are seeing this and you are not subscribed hit the subscribe button i'm not going to tell you to hit the bell just hit the button so that my number goes up because it'll make me happy and it'll make me able to make more videos for god's sake all right that's enough jibber jabber back 
to the skyboxes. Hopping over to Snow Snow Cool Cool Mountain. I love this skybox. Unfortunately, the music in this level is so sort of grounded and upbeat that it doesn't really let the vibes come through. But those pink and blue mountains really feel like they stretch absolutely to infinity to me. They feel weirdly ominous and they feel close, but really far away. And one of my favorite things about them is this is not what the level looks like at all. And maybe that's part of what people like about, and myself included, like about these skyboxes in general is this is not what Mario 64 looks like. You know, in future Mario games, the level of detail in the gameplay and the level of detail in the uh, skyboxes really kind of came together. They got a lot uh, closer together. But in Mario 64, it is completely stark. The level does not look like the mountains. This is, you know, they call it Cool Cool Mountain, but A, it's floating. B, what part of this is a mountain? So this is definitely a personal favorite of mine, uh, for sure. Big Boo's Haunt, Skybox always terrified me. Not quite as much as the Skybox in, um, what's the what's the Banjo-Kazooie Halloween level? I don't remember. But the that sound of the music, the... <laughs> That sound, when you hear that and you're looking at that moon, I always used to get the heebie-jeebies. Because again, I think something about just the contrast between the level and the skybox here makes the skybox feel really imposing, makes it feel really dreamlike. That's a quality people talk about with Mario 64 a lot, like it's a strange dream. And especially when you have objects that are sort of everyday objects, trees, moon, put that all together, man, and you've got a something, a level that really shouldn't be as scary as it is. But it's, you know, especially if you're a kid, absolutely terrifying. And don't even get me started on that hallway. I used to sprint through that hallway as fast as I possibly could just to make sure, because it's so and scary. That's one thing, we'll get into this another day. I just keep making Mario content, I'm so sorry. Well, I guess it's almost March, Mario month. But future Mario games really got away from actually being scary. Haunted levels in like, if if you play like, uh, like Mario Galaxy, those haunted levels are like, ha ha. You know, it's like a squishy rubber ghost. Big Boo's Mansion Haunt level is like imposing almost. And that that's Skybox music, piano, hallway. I could talk about it all day, maybe another time. Shifting Sandland has another very good skybox in it. It's another one of those ones that really, especially with that sort of uh, visual filter, if you take that filter away, check this out. The illusion's kind of lost. You know, it, feel, it, it really doesn't get as deep in the soul for me as when you blur it all up. Again, if you get the wing cap, you can get one of those nice skybox only moments, which is super cool. And I like the implication, the, the skybox here, the implication being that there's some sort of civilization out there and yet it feels empty. That's another good point, is that with these Mario 64 skyboxes, there is, there's stuff that implies the existence of sort of a bigger world, but when you look at it, it looks totally lifeless. So it's, maybe that's kind of the liminal space the piece, the liminal piece that people are talking about, right? These skyboxes have islands, which implies a bigger world, implies life, implies other things, but they are totally static and totally dead. You know, the pyramids imply civilization, it implies slave labor, but it is dead. It is a totally dead image. There's no dy dynamism to it at all. <laughs> Lethal Lava Land, another decent skybox. Again, it's kind of imposing, giant realistic flames superimposed over this tiny little playground of goofy Mario stuff. I often wonder if it was intentional that they wanted that sort of odd feeling, that odd juxtaposition of realism, but it was probably just, hey, we can put photographs in a game now. So then they did it and then, you know, it happened on accident. <laughs> Now, the, the skybox in the first Bowser level is definitely terrifying. This one, more than any, makes me feel like a teeny tiny uh, level inside of a giant cavern. Obviously, it looks like a cavern, but it's green for some reason. The stalagmites and stalactites look like giant creepy teeth. When you stare at it, it's built in such a way that your brain can start to recognize faces in the distance. And it comes in a level that is a dangerous level. A lot of places to fall off, a lot of jumps you have to make. So you will often find yourself falling into the abyss of those giant creepy green teeth. Again, Mario has really moved away from actually nervous feelings. There's not a lot of actually like, Ugh, I'm a little creeped out feelings when you play Mario anymore these days. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. It is a bad thing, but I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. They can make whatever game they want, but it is 
one of the things that's so fascinating about Mario 64. Yeah. Wet dry world. Now, this is the skybox that everybody knows. This one probably best illustrates every single thing that people have come to love and fear the Mario 64 skyboxes for. Because you got a couple of different things here. Number one, clearly a photograph, right? This is not a painting. This is, I mean, it might be a painting, but like it's a photograph. This is a superimposed image. Number two, not only the implication of a bigger world, but the implication of human life. Number three, totally dead. Number four, for some reason, it's underwater. Number five, it's underwater, but there's still a sun. And I know you can see the sun through water, I guess, so it's maybe not that weird. But the idea of sun in a skybox and then water ripples, like you're underwater in a skybox, very odd. This is one of the few skyboxes that has gotten uh, wide attention, outside, I mean, relatively wide attention outside of, uh, you know, me talking about it on Eggbusters. And one of the other uh, unique things about it is it's not just a uh, environmental sort of biome setting. You know, you got biomes, fire biome, sand biome, sky biome. This isn't really a biome. This is a specific place and number two it's a you can't see it when you're all the way down to the bottom so from from below it just looks like oh interesting i'm underwater and then as you get further up in the level when you get to the best vantage point which is up top of the uh top of this high platform that's when you really can see whoa there's like a giant weirdly infinite repeating city going all around me it's a great skybox you know it's the sometimes the most popular skybox is the greatest skybox all right, that's gonna wrap us up for looking at all these skyboxes. Did you remember what the one level is that has the island skybox that we didn't talk about? It's easy to miss because it is Dire Dire Docks. <laughs> you can only see it right at the beginning of right at the beginning when you are falling into the level. So it's a quick one. And then, but from that point on, you're too far down to see it. And then you go into the submarine room and that's that, you never see it again. Okay, that's gonna wrap us up for our very first episode of Skybox Appreciation. I haven't decided if I'll make more, but I probably will, cause I, I love skyboxes. What's your favorite uh, Mario 64 skybox? Thanks so much for watching everybody. As always, I appreciate it. Hit me up on Patreon if you want to, but that's it, I, that's all I got for you today. Please enjoy the song. Thank you.